Yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Gert Loving. I'm uh, based in Amsterdam, and I, where I'm heading the Institute of Network Cultures. Um, this Vortrag was originally uh, of Deutsch geplant. Um, es gab ein bisschen Verwirrung darüber, uh, in welche Sprache es uh, stattfinden sollte. Uh, aber die Organisation hat mir gesagt, ich soll das doch uh, lieber auf Englisch machen. Also, wenn es um, euch nicht stört, ich finde es schade, aber okay. <laughs> uh, uh, egal. Uh, so, we, we do this talk in English, um, uh, and because approximately 25% of the um, current visitors um, are non-German spe speakers. So, okay, I would like to welcome everyone here. Um, I'm going to um, lead you through uh, some of the recent projects uh, of our Institute of Network Cultures before I come um, to uh, today's uh, topic. Um, and um, <coughs> I moved from Australia to the Netherlands, back to the Netherlands in 2004, where I had this uh, unique opportunity to uh, head my own little research institute. It looks bigger than it really is. We only have kind of two permanent staff, but, um, uh, and that includes uh, me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but nonetheless, uh, Coming from uh, the squatters movement in the 80s, the do-it-yourself culture, uh, I knew uh, exactly that uh, you know I can do a lot with a little bit of money. If you don't have any money, it's really really hard to do little. Uh, but if you have little money, you can do an awful lot with it. So this is this has been uh, our um, recipe, and um, uh, I work uh, within, uh, let's say, the, the European uh, uh, tradition. Uh, of uh, critique, as you can see, um, um, with Pitschultz in '95 uh, here in Berlin, we started the uh, the Net Time Initiative, which still is dedicated to uh, the further development of what we call internet criticism. Um, some have noticed that internet criticism have has gone mainstream lately, at least uh, in this country. Uh, that's certainly not uh, the case uh, worldwide. Uh, but, um, okay, we are um, uh, developing a, a methodology uh, that um, um, entails uh, the um, uh, development, the, uh, let's say, the, um, uh, how can I say, um, our institute wants to spur early research into e emerging uh, topics. It means that we uh, bring together uh, researchers, artists, and activists around uh, these issues with the idea uh, that um, the, the, the projects that we do kind of create a small critical mass of people that work in the, in the same field, they get to know each other, they start to collaborate, and so on, and the rest, the rest we know. Uh, so what, what we are doing is, um, with the little financial means that we have, uh, is uh, be, be on certain topics very early. Um, uh, and um, the, our specific methodology, as I said, is European, in that we believe that radical criticism is one of the major forces uh, in innovation. Yeah? Of course, in the American Silicon Valley uh, uh, model, uh, uh, innovation has to be positive, new age, you have to bring a, a, a good message, uh, yeah? feel good message. We think that uh, the, the unique Euro uh, European quality would be radical critique. Uh, we, uh, this is our background, our intellectual background. Mine is, uh, of, is uh, let's say, of German media theory, but it's something else. Uh, and uh, it is through that uh, spirit that we believe that we can develop critical concepts that later on can also be you know, developed in a variety uh, of uh, practices. Okay. Um, this is the website. You can see uh, a few uh, a few of the of the projects, um, and um, one of the most uh, successful ones recently has been uh, the Video Vortex project. 
which deals with uh, artist responses to YouTube. Um, we've had already five uh, big events, a, a reader with now producing a second publication. This is a very, very active, uh, mostly European uh, uh, network. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope to bring it to Berlin as well at some point. The, um, this is uh, something recent uh, that uh, we've started. As I said, I'm not going to give an overview of all the things we do, but this, uh, this, kick, this one kicked off in, um, uh, in, um, in November, but uh, it goes back uh, to events in Maastricht, organized by Florian Kramer, and, uh, and in um, Vienna, organized by Felix Stalder and Konrad Becker. This is kind of a, a loose European network work of people that uh, try to deal with uh, you know, the search engine and search uh, from, let's say, an arts and humanities perspective. Um, yeah, so it's not purely, purely technical. Of course, there, it is a technical topic. Um, yeah, uh, but um, what, uh, what we uh, start to do is, is bring together who, uh, people who work in this field from a critical perspective. Now that's quite important because, if you know, uh, you know it's it's quite difficult to uh, critique uh, Google. Um, uh, it's very easy to praise it, and it's very hard to critique it. Let's say from a sophisticated intellectual uh, and political point of view. If you don't want to end up in some kind of resentment or cultural pessimism or yeah, warning warning kids not to use the computer and so on and so on. Yeah, if you don't want to go there. Then, then what? Yeah? If, you, if you don't want to uh, uh, preach the Bildungsbürger uh, uh, and uh, help them in their painful process uh, of, uh, of change, and if you see that you know, there are more, bigger uh, political projects, then, then you'll have to <laughs> come up with something. Uh, it's one thing to uh, propose a, a nationalization of uh, Google or a straight out uh, ban. Uh, but I think this is better. This is something that uh, we could better deal with uh, within a European back, uh, perspective um, and do that uh, in Brussels. Uh, we think that, uh, that it's also very interesting to look, to look at alternatives for Google, to discuss them, to promote them, and also to see where, where this could uh, probably uh, go. And these are some of the questions that this project, this network, which is now a network of events, uh, is, is posing. We are looking at alternative browsers. We are looking at uh, next generation uh, uh, search engines. Uh, we think that, uh, you know, for instance, from a technical point of view, too long, especially by journalists, we've been focused on, let's say, the algorithm, uh, kind of the, the fetishism of the, of the Google algorithm. Uh, by now we know that uh, this algorithm was indeed important at the very beginning, 10, 12 years ago, but uh, Google, for instance, now is a, is a huge uh, international uh, uh, enterprise and uh, the, the role in particular of, of the algorithm, for instance, uh, might be a little bit overstated uh, these days. There are a lot of different ways uh, to search and Google uh, lists, I think, uh, about 200 ways uh, to do that. Um, and um, yeah, so this, uh, is looks, uh, this project looks into the, the history, and um, it, this is the book that uh, kind of came out, which uh, our, our colleagues in, uh, in, uh, in Vienna uh, produced. So this is the first comprehensive publication um, coming from Europe with a critical perspective. Uh, it is in, um, in English and, and in German, so uh, two separate um, uh, books, if you're interested. This is probably you know, the most uh, sophisticated uh, publication about this topic at, at, at the moment. Uh, if you read it, you can also say, well, it's still a bit, it's, it's early days here. And this is the, the problem that we have uh, in all these fields. Yeah? If, you, if you start to do uh, critical work, you, you really have the idea, okay, a lot is happening, but it's still early days. We are still very much uh, behind, and this feeling uh, that uh, critique is kind of running behind the facts is a, is a very structural uh, problem that we have to face. On the one hand, you could say, okay, if we're behind, we have to speed up. 
uh, we have to, uh, or we have to slow down even further, that's what some say, uh, or, um, you know, we have to question uh, the, the very, uh, the very uh, paradigms uh, that we are uh, confronted with. Uh, so these projects really uh, ask uh, these questions. Uh, and the next uh, event is in, uh, is in Vienna, uh, so if you're interested, uh, we, are, uh, we are continuing uh, to, to gather and uh, to see you know, how, uh, how we can um, deal with critical interventions in that, uh, in that large field of, of search and, uh, and Google, I have to, I have to say. Uh, it's about Google and it's not. Uh, that's also about this one. Uh, this is the project that we're doing this year. Uh, it's called Critical Point of View, uh, and it's a, it's a, a Wikipedia research initiative. Um, we have uh, started this one uh, together uh, with uh, the, uh, the Center for Internet and Society. Um, Nishan Shah is uh, speaking in, an, in another uh, room here. I haven't seen him yet, but he's around uh, to speak about uh, the other project uh, that his center in Bangalore uh, is doing, and the, um, the Digital Natives Research Initiative. Uh, this is something that um, yeah, we're very proud of uh, to have uh, pulled off. It's a real Indian collaboration, uh, also with people uh, from the University of Siegen here in Germany, uh, with uh, also members in, uh, in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, a next meeting is now uh, planned for this uh, in, um, in Leipzig. Uh, so there will be a German uh, meeting of this uh, initiative probably on the 22nd and 23rd uh, of September. There will be a meeting in German face of, uh, focusing on the, uh, the research, the Wikipedia research that is happening within this, uh, let's say, cultural context. Um, and a next one, a big one, is planned for Taipei in January. So we're really putting a lot of efforts into uh, pulling off this independent Wikipedia research. Why independent? I think, uh, yeah, I don't know if you know Wikipedians. Uh, uh, you you quite, quite soon get into a fight with them <laughs> about, uh, about their project. So uh, it was uh, uh, our idea that, uh, you know, they're not, uh, it's not forbidden for them to participate, but this is not a collaboration with the Wikimedia Foundation, and we are quite explicit uh, about it. We want to have a free space uh, to talk about all the, all the different aspects uh, of, the, of the Wikipedia project in order to critically support it, I have to say. This, is, this is really comes from people, uh, on more than half of them are in fact, of course, Wikipedians. That's no surprise, uh, but um, uh, because uh, you, you need to know something about it if you, if you want to do research about it. Here you can see a little bit uh, the, the, the topics that we are trying to deal uh, with this, uh, with this uh, network that's sti still em emerging uh, as, we, as we speak. We emphasize a lot on the, on the interface design. Wikipedia itself is working on that. Uh, we've got a more academic section on the history of encyclopedias and the, you know, the, the place of uh, uh, Wikipedia in it, its relation to arts. Uh, because Wikipedia is going multi multimedia, and that's a very interesting uh, development in relation to Creative Commons, online video, and so on. Um, there's a bit hardcore statistics as well, because uh, the, the, uh, it's the seventh biggest website in the world. It generates an enormous amount of data and different data sets that researchers uh, can, can use. And again, uh, of course, the, the most central debate there is designing debate. It's about the whole issue, issue of moderation and so on. We all know about that. Uh, also, the, the German case there is very interesting. This, this uh, debate that recently took place about possible forking. And because it is a, um, uh, let's say, a global uh, initiative, um, and Wikipedia itself has um, emphasized this lately more and more, uh, because most of the uh, contributors, we know that, are uh, somehow white, uh, male, middle age, yeah, uh, somehow grumpy, grumpy guys. Um, uh, we, and that this is known, that the statistics uh, <laughs> about that are available, and I can sh show them <laughs> to you if you like. But all right, 
Uh, it, the challenge for Wikipedia is, of course, to uh, move to the non-Western world, to uh, really work uh, on Spanish, Arab, uh, and a lot of other languages. All these uh, Wikipedia uh, are, uh, uh, you know, editions are, are available. They have started, but it's now really about uh, bringing them up to a critical mass. Yeah? That, for instance, the, the German uh, Wikipedia really has achieved. And the, the, the German Wikipedia, in that sense, is a very, very good example how, how to do that. Because Spanish and English, they're somehow world languages. Uh, it, it, things get a little bit blurred there. So the post-colonial um, uh, uh, critique of Wikipedia is a very, very important uh, uh, starting point. Uh, now I come to the topic myself. Uh, as I already said, <coughs> when I ask myself, what is Web 2.0? Uh, this is usually my answer. This is what uh, has happened since the dot-com crash, since uh, huh? the second incarnation of internet culture, if you like. And that is the, the, the significant move of internet use and internet cultures away from, from the West. Uh, you've heard uh, China becoming bigger uh, than the US in terms of its uses last year. Well, OK, we can go into all these statistics. Uh, uh, this one is uh, maybe also quite significant. Huh? Uh, English still is the, the number one language, but in one, between one and two years, that will be no longer the case. Overall, uh, English will somehow stabilize around a comfortable minority position of 20-25% uh, of, of the content. Yeah? And uh, it, it's particularly Arab, uh, Spanish, uh, Portuguese that will, uh, will grow significantly uh, over the next uh, uh, few years. I don't think German can grow, Japan Japanese can't really grow, Korean can't really grow, but uh, others uh, have a, 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 a really um, interesting uh, you know, growth spur ahead of them. This is uh, what I have uh, been emphasizing a lot in my own uh, blog research. Maybe you, you know that while I was here in Berlin a couple of years ago, I wrote the essay, Blogging the Nihilist Impulse. Um, and that is, in fact, based on this very, very diverse uh, uh, picture that you get when, when we talk about you know, what do people blog when, when they blog about. Well, what, what are the topics? And usually. Uh, the emphasis in the me uh, is, is usually around on this. And so when we're talking about bloggers, and that's particularly the case in, in, in Germany, and I think that's very unfortunate, uh, it is always about how do bloggers relate to so-called old media, Holzmedien, and so weiter. Yeah? Um, uh, and I think that is, uh, from the, from just purely from the uh, perspective of the statistics, this is a slightly irrelevant uh, question. Because if you look at the overall blog landscape, people blog about anything, about anything, yeah? And there's so much going on. And the question whether, you know, s some want to become journalists or not, or, or, or is, is uh, I, I mean, uh, for, for me, it's com completely overrated. And uh, I think it's uh, really uh, also a pity, because what we do not get to see is the, is the rich variety uh, in, in blog uh, uh, culture. Uh, if we only emphasize on the small group of, of wannabe journalists or not wannabe journalists, then uh, the whole thing is going in circles. And what happens when it's going in circles? Uh, you are a hype, and then you're out, and you're forgotten, and so on. We, are, we know all these cycles, and I think uh, you know, we can learn from that. Um, yeah. All right. What has happened uh, over the last uh, few years is, is this... Um, this kind of obsession, almost, uh, with uh, the, the quantities. Yeah? There is this uh, whole feeling that we are overwhelmed, and, uh, and in, uh, in the academic, uh, let's say, uh, circles, we, we would call this the quantitative turn. Yeah? The internet has gone uh, from, let's say, a pioneering culture, a subculture, cyber culture, towards a mainstream. A mainstream that is not, uh, you know, that is maybe not so different from society, but it's maybe quite different from uh, the media landscape that we uh, have known over the past uh, few uh, decades. 
Um, so uh, what, uh, what we are particularly dealing with is this uh, issue of, uh, why is this so hard? Um, okay, well here, here you can see other uh, uh, um, statistics, it just, it just doesn't stop. Um, I have 5 million tweets a day, um, how many? 900,000 uh, new articles that, that bloggers post and so on. Yeah, and, and um, here again there are, there are more, more issues. And um, what, uh, what this has uh, uh, led to, uh, in particularly uh, in the, uh, for, the, uh, for the leaders in the, uh, what in Germany is called Phaeton, uh, in the uh, kind of the op opinionated uh, uh, press is this lam lamination, this, this kind of uh, cry for guidance and uh, this, uh, this fear of uh, information uh, overload. Yeah? People can't manage uh, anymore, they, they, they've stopped reading their emails, uh, they, they have to uh, somehow de deal with uh, Twitter but they can't. Uh, they don't know how to fit it into their busy everyday life, and so on and so on. Yeah, um, and uh, we have been uh, dealing with this issue uh, already for 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 a while uh, in our institute. And uh, in, in 2006, we started this uh, this initiative. It's called My Creativity, and it, it deals with the issue that uh, here, especially here in Berlin, of course, has been uh, discussed uh, uh, widely. And that's the whole issue. Uh, of uh, you know how do you manage it all? How do you make a living? How do you uh, divide your time? Uh, all these questions uh, that you uh, might uh, consider as uh, as private or personal, but we we know very well that they are completely defined uh, by uh, the rules uh, in society. Uh, uh, for for many professions, uh, to deal with the internet is, is becoming uh, inevitable. L lately, I've I've noticed. For instance, in the Netherlands, that uh, because of the uh, rising uh, rise in unemployment, the, uh, all the architecture firms have now s s uh, suddenly uh, woken up. So all the, uh, the architects, they've fired about 20% of their workforce, and uh, they've discovered that they have now have, now have to deal uh, with Web uh, 2.0. Uh, of course, in the building boom, they couldn't care less. They had clients anyway. Uh, it, it didn't really matter uh, uh, what they uh, thought of what they did with the internet. Uh, they were doing very well anyway, but uh, just very recently. Um, so it, it, it's kind of, it goes in waves and uh, every um, uh, profession has to uh, deal with it. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a, a research that uh, recently we uh, uh, commissioned to do uh, by Rosalind Jill, uh, who worked at the uh, London School of Economics, and it asked the question, you know, how, what are the, 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 the working circumstances, what are the working conditions uh, in, in the, our industry, in our branch? And this is really important uh, to ask because we know, for instance, in the case of web design, that prices have been falling. Uh, uh, still, uh, a lot of people uh, enter the field, and uh, she had a very interesting outcome uh, in saying that people accept lower uh, incomes uh, because they gain in, in freedom. They don't have to work for a boss. And uh, this, so, so their lack of income is compensated uh, in, in that uh, lifestyle uh, uh, choice, which is interesting because it, it doesn't really, of course, fit to the pure, let's say, um, Marxist uh, kind of analysis of uh, Entfremdung and so on. Uh, this is kind of a similar, uh, similar uh, sign, this is San Precario, he's, he's our saint of the precarious workers. Uh, this is a really an, an Italian invention, and what I like about it is, is that it kind of tries to emphasize this double aspect of the situation. Uh, uh, namely that we can, th that we can be proud uh, of, uh, of the freedoms, that we uh, have gained, but of course we are very concerned about labor conditions and uh, income. Uh, so, um, and I think this is, this is kind of the, the strategy uh, that, uh, that we should follow. And I find this a very interesting uh, kind of follow-up uh, German example uh, of that, Mir Reichs, 
uh, nicht, <laughs> uh, which is about uh, interns uh, and the way, for uh, in particular, the, uh, the cultural sector is, is using interns. Uh, this is, of course, also the case uh, with, um, uh, with a lot of uh, new media and design uh, com com companies who, who uh, employ a lot of uh, these so-called practicanten. Um, and I think just from a perspective of uh, organizing people uh, and um, you know, raising social issues, this, this is really uh, a, an interesting um, strategy. Okay, um, now I come to the, the, the topic of, uh, you know, what, what of my title, and that is the free culture. And that, uh, what we have lately seen is quite an interesting kind of clash of cultures, but it's also a very in interesting and, in and inspiring debate. This uh, is uh, the Oxcars, I think the, they were held for the second time in, in, um, in uh, Barcelona in, uh, in October, and <coughs> it's a huge event, uh, especially in the Spanish-speaking world, in the Spanish context. Maybe it's a little bit comparison uh, even to uh, this event here. Um, and uh, we had, for the first time in, in the preparation, with a, a large number of people, a big debate with the organizers about why they emphasized free culture. Free culture is clearly uh, a, um, you know, a right-wing uh, concept uh, of, uh, of US think tanks uh, that kind of want to uh, you know, go head-on with the intellectual property rights regimes. It's, it's related to Creative Commons and Lawrence Lessig. It's a very, very, you know, kind of liberal uh, approach, and, and from, a, let's say, a political perspective, uh, it has, you know, it has to be said that uh, the celebration of free culture is not really in the interest uh, of, uh, the, the, let's say, the creative workers. Huh? Of course, we cannot go back uh, to the old regime of intellectual property rights, but at least we have to put uh, it on the agenda how to make a living. This is a at the time of economic crisis, and it had, hits us very hard, in particular young people, and uh, we cannot walk away from this and just celebrate free culture and say everybody has to give its work uh, uh, away for free and, and be happy with creative commons and so on. Um, and um, so th th there was a, a really uh, a, a lively debate there about this, and, and it, it is this kind of coalition uh, that I think is, is, is uh, kind of pointing at the future, where we are try, try to kind of maintain some of the values uh, of uh, free, free software, open source, of free culture, creative commons, and at the same time uh, focus on how uh, we can uh, 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 you know, give creative workers, uh, intellectual workers, uh, public intellectuals, and so on and so on, um, a, a living. Uh, this is the charter that uh, was produced. Uh, at, uh, at the event uh, in, um, uh, in Barcelona. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, uh, document uh, because it, you can see that the, the people who, uh, who have made this are clearly st starting to uh, have uh, doubts internally and have a lot of debates about, about this issue. How to, how to re reconcile these, these two different, uh, let's say, demands. Uh, and, uh, I, of course, Ökonux uh, in the German context has, has worked on this for a, for a long time. Uh, yeah, and, and their emphasis on, uh, on uh, peer to peer production. Uh, so that is, uh, that is something, uh, somehow a threat that we should also uh, kind of insert uh, in this uh, debate. But this is kind of, uh, in my opinion, where we are uh, at the moment. Yes, well, we need uh, to defend uh, uh, free culture, but we also need to uh, put the economic uh, things, um, our, our economic demands on the agenda. Well, this is of course Pirate Bay. Uh, you can, as you can see, you can download for free here the book "Free" uh, by Chris Anderson. Uh, he's a very Hippocratic uh, person. He is the uh, uh, um, editor, uh, editor in chief of Wired magazine. Uh, he has always refused to, uh, to put his book uh, online for free. Uh, many people have <laughs> have uh, have done it uh, for him, uh, uh, but this kind of points at uh, the kind of the in internal hypocrisy uh, of of the Silicon Valley uh, 
uh, agenda. Uh, free is always free of others. It's other people's content that needs to be free, not my content. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I thought this was uh, funny. Of the book um, is now, uh, I think it's uh, two years old, but still, I think it, it kind of uh, you know incorporates the dominant, uh, let's say, in internet uh, ideology. Yeah, audio book. I know, but I'm, I'm talking about the book itself. So, hmm? and I know that uh, he made it available, but then also it, it disappeared again. So, um, yeah. Now I want to uh, go through, uh, uh, let's say, four, uh, let's say, internet critics um, uh, that uh, that I'm um, uh, kind of uh, looking at or that I want to uh, relate to or think think that are interesting. Uh, this is uh, really certainly the most uh, prominent one for me, at least. Uh, Nicholas Carr uh, used to be uh, editor-in-chief of the um, uh, Harvard Business Review in the 90s and then uh, became an independent writer. Um, and his latest book, which is going to be out uh, in a few months, is called What the Internet is Doing to Our Brains, The Shallows. Uh, this is his blog. And uh, he, he's probably the most fierce kind of critic of, of the free, of Wikipedia, uh, of, uh, of the economic model that uh, underpins Google. Um, and uh, yeah, I can highly uh, recommend uh, you to, uh, to kind of look at his work and follow it. He became, uh, let's say, uh, particularly famous in July 2008 when the Atlantic Monthly published uh, uh, this article. It's, uh, it's Google making us uh, uh, stupid. <coughs> and uh, the, uh, the piece, uh, you know, asked the question uh, whether uh, searching is kind of creating a new culture of what, what I call, you know, modern ner nervosity. That, that's the term, of course, Freud uh, uh, used uh, 100 years ago. But uh, this is kind of, uh, I think, uh, what, uh, what he, he, he is describing here. This, uh, this nervousness, this relentless looking, going back to different, uh, uh, different windows, uh, different sites, updating. We all know, huh? I mean, this uh, conference I read on the website uh, is dedicated uh, to the, the real-time uh, internet. And I think that is uh, a sign uh, of the time. Huh? Uh, internet is, uh, in its very structure and culture, moving away from uh, the archive approach uh, and moving uh, slowly, bit by bit, uh, to uh, the flow, to the real-time uh, uh, internet. Uh, this, uh, this conference is a good example. Uh, we have a, a live stream. Uh, it's not archived. Uh, and uh, this is kind of what, what people uh, uh, expect. Uh, these days, and also what's, what, what is uh, kind of cool, and what, what you need uh, to do. Of course, tr streaming has been around for the last uh, 10 years or so, but finally it's working, and also the computers are at the very end uh, uh, of, the, of the line, uh, at, the, at the end of the uh, uh, users, are now uh, ready uh, to receive a lot of, uh, a lot of data. So uh, this, this real-time internet uh, is kind of ready uh, to, to take off. And um, uh, Nicholas Carr, in, in this essay, asked you know, what, what the long-term uh, implications are uh, of, uh, of this uh, culture. Uh, and, of course, there's the big debate in, in amongst uh, teachers and in, uh, in the uh, buildings uh, sector um, uh, also about this. Uh, should, uh, should we stop uh, uh, teaching uh, children? Can they just look it up and uh, find? Well, that's in fact what children are already doing. Eh? So uh, maybe we have another philosophy uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the school, in the classroom, uh, but, but the children are themselves are already uh, 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 just doing this, uh, this way of learning. Now, whether it's a form of learning or not is, is exactly uh, the debate. Uh, and this uh, article uh, maybe looks more into uh, the, what I call, you know, the neurological turn uh, in net criticism, uh, which means that uh, there's a growing amount of uh, uh, opinion leaders and researchers that look into the, 
uh, long-term effects on the human brain uh, of, of this uh, nervousness, of this constant searching and switching, multitasking and so on, being available. Clay Shirky uh, uh, is one of the uh, players in that field and uh, yeah, I find his, uh, his, uh, his approach qu uh, quite interesting. He is, on the one hand, he's an intellectual but he's also uh, kind of a very pragmatic, uh, almost entrepreneurial-like uh, uh, researcher. And so he sh kind of shies away a little bit from all these uh, big cultural uh, debates. Uh, and so for him, uh, the, the problem is quite uh, simple. It's a fil filter failure, not information overload. And I think that's, that's interesting. And this, this, this problem, this proposition that he makes will be uh, with us for quite some time. And of course, here, he me with uh, filter, he doesn't mean, of course, the filters that are now under debate everywhere. Uh, that will filter internet content uh, uh, for censorship, but um, you, here you have to think of filters probably more uh, in the sense of uh, the so-called dashboards that people uh, install on their, on their desktops, huh? where, where you decide uh, which information uh, arrives uh, to you, where you uh, are again uh, in, in control because you have uh, uh <coughs> defined uh, uh, the terms uh, of the filter. Uh, now this is, uh, I don't need, maybe here I need to say much about this guy and uh, his book Playback. It's been widely um, uh, uh, discussed uh, uh, mainly here in the, um, in the German uh, speaking world. The book has not uh, been translated uh, yet. Um, he's certainly part uh, of that, uh, let's say, scene, uh, what I call the neurological turn in, in, in his book he is paying a lot of attention uh, to this question of uh, information overload, how to deal with it, uh, and uh, the question uh, of, the, of the brain. Um, yeah, uh, the book was, I think, quite hastily uh, uh, written. Uh, it needs a, a bit of a rewrite, I think, for a second edition. I hope he's going to do that. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, overall, I mean, uh, coming from the very pragmatic cultures, uh, it's quite astonishing, at least for me, that a, a guy who's in charge of a major web, um, newspaper is able to write uh, such a book. In the Netherlands, that would be completely inconceivable uh, because they just don't have the intellectual capacity uh, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they are just businessmen, <laughs> and uh, you know they're in the in the in the in the game of of just selling uh, quick, quick and dirty uh, news. So in that sense, I I think it's really nice that there is still is intellectual <laughs> culture in this country at least. Uh, uh, you can't say that of many other countries uh, where non <coughs> the anti-intellectualism uh, is very, very strong. Um, now this is of course the, uh, yeah, uh, the, the one that, uh, that I, I read with the most pleasure and it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, a problematic uh, book. I hope it's it will come out in, in, in German um, soon. <coughs> Uh, he writes from really from the inside of the of the from the inside the belly of the beast, so to say. He's a really Silicon Valley uh, guy. Uh, maybe you you've heard of him. He's the um, the kind of uh, the VR uh, hippie uh, that uh, is very much also into playing alternative instruments and uh, into uh, you know the music industry. He has a, a, a very uh, rich and. Uh, you know, diff diverse life. He's, he's operating in a, in, a, in a lot of different fields, um, and this book is a is a really is a radical critique of uh, of free culture, uh, of the mediocre uh, uh, culture uh, of uh, Wikipedia, and it's a very strong plea uh, to go back to some kind of humanistic, radical individualism. Uh, th this is what he thinks uh, will ultimately save the internet. Not the crowdsourcing, not uh, you know, not the, the kind of the, the collaborative uh, uh, projects, but uh, the, the unique <coughs> individual uh, voices. That uh, uh, this is kind of uh, this sums up uh, his uh, his uh, uh, argument uh, in this book. Um, uh, you follow the money. Uh, and if the money is going to advertisers, like, uh, read. Yeah, he cannot say Google, of course, uh, because he's a Silicon Valley insider. He is not allowed to, to 
critique Google, so he cannot write Google there. Uh, but of course, being good uh, uh, Silicon Valley readers, like Kremlin readers, we can read their Google. Uh, instead of musicians, uh, then society is more concerned with manipulation than truth or beauty. That's kind of, yeah, it's, it's a bit naive, uh, we could say. But he's the first uh, real insider in that culture uh, that uh, stands up and says, this, we should stop this. We, cannot, we should stop celebrating uh, the so-called user-generated content, uh, the do-it-yourself do uh, uh, culture. Uh, is, is leading nowhere, it's dumbing us down, it's not bringing us further. And it goes against the very uh, nature uh, of, uh, of the internet uh, uh, itself, uh, which in his uh, view should uh, you know, a a enable uh, the and emancipate uh, the, the individual. Um, in my uh, own work, uh, maybe you uh, have followed it or a little bit. Um, I'm uh, now primarily focusing on um, on these uh, on these uh, trends. Um, the, as I the colonization of uh, of real time, I think is a, is a really interesting one uh, that um, you know is going to stay with us. Uh, maybe you know you think of Twitter or Google Wave, Buzz. Uh, but also, of course, the, the fact that people carry the internet with them or everywhere they go uh, on their um, <laughs> Blackberries, iPhones, and so on. And that, that is all creating this, this uh, what, I, what I call colonization of real time. Uh, a summary of this uh, you can read in the, um, um, uh, on the website called uh, Eurozine, where I've uh, uh, recently posted an essay uh, on these issues, <laughs> and uh, I'm currently writing a book uh, about, uh, about these uh, issues, and I hope to finish it later on uh, this year. Uh, particularly, uh, I'm focused on uh, comment culture. Well, it's a bit ironic because my last book was called Zero Comments. Uh, uh, of course, that was referring to the long tail, uh, and now I'm, I'm not focusing so much on the long tail, but uh, looking at the you know, the, the really popular websites where each posting, you know, would have like 200 uh, responses. Uh, there's the, the, the big uh, websites in the Netherlands. Uh, one of them is, for instance, is called Marocco.nl, where the, where the youth uh, hangs out and fights over the, all the issues of, uh, of Islam. Uh, it's a real, it's a hobby horse of uh, my country at the moment. Um, and this website is tremendously popular amongst uh, really young people, teenagers, let's say. Um, and uh, they uh, are dealing with 50,000 comments every day, 50,000. And, and uh, th they, because they are uh, operating in this very delicate uh, field uh, of, of uh, critique of, uh, of Islam, uh, of uh, Islamic fundamentalists that are trying to, uh, you know, uh, raise uh, support there, this site is, uh, is heavily policed, and, and, and it, it, there's a lot of uh, uh, concern about this site. However, uh, the question really is there, and this is a question of more and more websites, how do you deal uh, with 50,000 comments? You can't read them all. You can, all. you can outsource them a little bit to bots. Uh, we can, we've seen that in, in Wikipedia increasingly. Uh, the editing and the control of new entries in Wikipedia uh, is done by bots, eh? so the, the uh, involvement uh, of bots is growing, and we can also see that in kind of the management uh, of, of this uh, comment culture. And the rise of extreme opinions, of course, that's related, uh, because uh, there are a lot of people that are very frustrated. This is, eh? this is the times of, of economic crisis, uh, of right-wing populism. It's, it's, uh, uh, growing, eh? just uh, see how what happened in, uh, in Hungary uh, on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> and this, and this, is really, this is now going hand in hand, with the internet being the mainstream uh, uh, voice um, and the, the, uh, the wooden press no longer really catching up. Uh, this is kind of uh, the new cultural uh, battleground. And it's related uh, to what, uh, what I call the emergence of national webs, uh, 
uh, because uh, more and more what we see is that uh, there's a decline, overall decline of the so-called uh, global internet and its ideology uh, towards uh, nationally confined uh, spaces. And it's very uh, ironic here that China is leading the way here uh, with its uh, great uh, Chinese firewall uh, and uh, they are now exporting that technology to a lot of different uh, countries. Of course, with the help uh, of a lot of uh, uh, Western um, uh, companies that install this uh, filtering software and that are actively involved in censoring uh, the Internet. So this is a real debate. And of course, in other presentations, I know, uh, you know there's, there's a, lot, uh, a lot more that uh, is said uh, about this uh, trend. Uh, I would like to close here with uh, um, saying that uh, uh, we, uh, with the coalition of people in Amsterdam, uh, are putting together uh, a big event uh, on, uh, on the uh, economy of uh, open content. It's a follow-up of, of an earlier event that the Bali organized in uh, April 2008, which was called Economies of, of the Commons. And we will, uh, at this event, uh, particularly look at, uh, at the question, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, what, uh, what I've raised here, the critique of the free, uh, but also the question of, you know, how, how, can, how can artists make a living uh, in this uh, space? Uh, are we going to, how are we going to deal with uh, uh, cultural heritage? Um, and uh, a lot of uh, kind of... Uh, Issues that uh, border, let's say, the political issues, culture, uh, legal issues, and uh, the e economy. And we think that it's really time that we come together and have uh, a lot of kind of uh, brain, uh, brainstorms and, and open sessions, uh, you know, how, how we can um, uh, proceed with this. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's time for, for questions, so if you if you have if you want to talk about some we want to know more. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Oh. Uh. Are you ahead? Uh, some questions here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah please. So. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I just have some kind of intellectual disconnect. You a while ago you said the do-it-yourself culture is dumbing, your, dumbing us down. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but th that's what Le uh, Jaron Lanier oh, said. Uh, yeah. just, um, mm -hmm. Is he talking uh, uh, like MakerBot, uh, Arduino, uh, Instructables, do-it-yourself culture? Or, uh, no, his main uh, example is uh, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the other example that he is using in his book it's not so much related to the internet, but uh, to the, uh, the spreading of uh, digital technologies in the, in, in the music industries. And what he's saying is that he sees a direct connection between the rise of, uh, let's say, music uh, editing software, uh, digital production, digital distribution, and the decline of what he calls pop music. Uh, that there are, he's, according to him, I, I, I don't agree with him, but. Um, uh, oh, there has not been any uh, new kind of style, you know, creative new style coming out of the music branch of, for the last uh, 20 years. And uh, he blames that to uh, this uh, spreading of the digital technologies. And he says that these um, technologies are dumping people down. They're, they're pointing people only at, at uh, mashups, at, uh, and they are not stimulating people to, um, to create new uh, original music and music styles. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the story for this way that Yep. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Uh, you mentioned the theory, uh, the <coughs> critical theory, and uh, this is a very, this is our. Um, main focus in Europe to, um, yeah. to go, go ahead with this tradition. Um, what did Adorno, Habermas, um, yeah. Habermas said about free culture? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good question because uh, finally 
uh, for instance, Habermas said something about it in his, uh, in his Dresden speech uh, in 2006 and uh, also in relation to that in a speech that he gave in Vienna, uh, in which he uh, describes uh, internet as a secondary culture, as ca kind of as a comment culture. Uh, that also, I think it is also a normative statement that he makes there, that should stay uh, secondary because uh, the other one, the primary culture, which is the print media and the broadcasting media, have to remain their dominant position in the creation uh, of culture and the, the kind of filtering and the production of, uh, of, let's say, collective opinions. Yeah? He doesn't believe that, uh, that the internet, uh, which is fragmenting the whole uh, landscape, is able uh, to really uh, you know, uh, synthesize public opinion. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that's where we are at, you know, talking about uh, the Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt School. And yeah, it's quite unfortunate that uh, uh, there isn't very much um, happening. The only uh, person that I find really inspiring is uh, an Israeli woman, uh, Eva Elus. Uh, her book has been uh, recently translated into German. Uh, she's been heavily in influenced by the Frankfurt School and um, she writes about emotional capitalism. She also had done, did a case study about speeding uh, websites and she's, she's really uh, up, to the, up to the topics. So uh, if you are interested in that, I can highly recommend her work. What kind of work do you do? Emotional, emotional. That's, that's uh, the title of one of her books. Uh, Eva Illus, I L L O U Z. Okay, yep. I would like to share a question. Um, you said uh, Google is making us stupid. Um, I don't think that Web2 is making us stupid, but I think something else. Um, we are very active on Web2 and social media, and we think we are busy doing things. And, but I think we see everything very uh, behind the uh, um, pink uh, glasses. So everything is fine. We are doing, we are active. Uh, what is your opinion about that? Well, I think uh, it's Google making us stupid is really uh, looking at it from a perspective of mainstream uh, of culture, of elite culture, uh, of academia, uh, and of, uh, let's say, the prime sites, Western sites of knowledge production. And we could say that, yes, indeed, I think these tools work against, uh, you know, the very, for instance, the very principle of reflection. If there is, uh, that this is the Paul Virilio argument, if there is no interval, uh, if there is no time to think, and if we have to think real time, well, you can't think real time. That's not possible. Yeah? Thinking requires time, yeah? for instance. Now, th these are kind of the, the kind of, you know, cultural critiques happening. If you look at it from a perspective, and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow in the Kalkscheune at, at uh, uh, 10.30, I'll give a, a second uh, talk. I'm, I'm looking at this from an activist uh, perspective, where these things are more like or tools, or, or where Web.0 2.0 can become a tool. You know, if we master the tool, I don't think we have yet mastered these tools very well. At the moment, these are very dumb, in my view, uh, mostly U.S. American kind of corporate uh, uh, platforms or environments. They have yet to be developed in tools. And once they will become tools, we can more get more uh, of a grip on them, uh, speaking from the perspective of artists, activists, and so on. But that's, now I'm summarizing tomorrow's talk, but, okay, please come if you want to hear more about that. One more question, because we've got Should only we have one more one question. All right. I think we have to uh, leave it there. Okay, thank you very much, and hopefully I'll uh, see you tomorrow at 10.30. Thank you. <laughs>